Hi there, I'm going to show you how to construct a very simple Bayesian network. There are many different software applications that you can use to construct a Bayesian network. However, we'll focus on one called Netica. Netica is a software package that you can obtain for free uh, by download and I'll provide instructions on where to download it and how to install it elsewhere. So once you're on a computer where Netica is installed, you can look for the Netica program, it has this icon, it's a dark blue square with a light blue square inside of it and we can open up uh, Netica, it's a very simple software package uh, and we'll start by creating a new network so we want to go File, New, Network so we have a new network screen here the icons that we'll first use are these three icons here, the yellow circle, the blue square uh, and the green hexagonon. Uh, if I take uh, the yellow circle, the yellow circles are nature nodes, the blue squares are decision nodes and the hexagons are what we call utility nodes. In this particular uh, lesson we're going to focus on the nature nodes. So I'm going to click on nature node and I'll simply insert three nature nodes into my uh, network that I'm starting to build. So by default they're named A, B and C but we can change those names. The network that I'm going to build as an example is one that could be used to estimate how much runoff might be generated into a stream or a reservoir or a river uh, after a particular rainfall event. So we might have a high rainfall event or a low rainfall event. We could put numbers on it or we could characterize it uh, more qualitatively. So if we have a rainfall event and we're thinking about how much water runoff will be generated, it will depend on a number of factors. Most important is whether or not that's a high rainfall event or a low rainfall event. How much rainfall actually occurs which could then lead to, to runoff. Of course, when it rains, some of the water soaks into the ground and doesn't generate runoff. So the other, or one other important parameter will be to think about what is the soil like? How dry is the soil uh, under the ambient conditions? If we have very dry soil, then we'll have what's called a high moisture deficit. So a lot of the water, when, it, when the rainfall occurs, that water will soak into the soil and it won't generate runoff. Uh, if the soil on the other hand is very damp and it holds a lot of moisture before the rainfall event occurs uh, then it's more likely to lead to runoff. So we could think about uh, two influencing parameters the amount of rainfall that occurs and the amount of moisture in the soil, the soil moisture content uh, and using those two pieces of information together we could generate a prediction of the likelihood of let's say high, medium or low levels of runoff uh, into a waterway. Okay, so we'll take this first first node, node A. One of the things you need to get used to is that when you're naming a node you cannot have any spaces. So it's just a string of letters with no spaces. Uh, sorry, let's call this rainfall. Okay. Uh, and if I want to give it a title that I'll be able to see more clearly we could call it rainfall today. The, the amount of rainfall uh, that is predicted today. Okay so here we have rainfall today uh, and we will call this other node over here uh, the soil moisture content. So let's call it soil moisture with no spaces uh, and in the title itself I will put uh, soil moisture content today. Just to be clear that uh, we're talking about the soil moisture content before the rainfall uh, occurs. Uh, and then down here the thing that we'll predict uh, based on the input information or the input states that we have for, for rainfall and soil moisture content uh, will be the runoff. And I might call it uh, runoff tomorrow. So it'll be the amount of water that uh, occurs as runoff after rainfall today depending on soil moisture content. 
Okay, so now we need to think about the cause and effect relationships. These two parameters at the, at the top are the two that will influence the outcome for the runoff. So for those, we join them with what are called arcs or links in, in Netica. So we click on this arrow, we go from the uh, node which is the cause node, the node which, which will be the predictive factor, to the outcome, to the cause, to the effect node. So we have rainfall and then another node here, sorry, another arc here, um, between the soil moisture content today and the runoff t tomorrow. So what this is telling me is that these two uh, parameters up here, if you like, uh, depending on what the conditions are or the numbers associated with them, will lead to predictions down here for, for runoff. Okay, so the next thing I want to do, I double click on the name, I can open up the dialog box again for that particular node, and I want to uh, define a number of states. So the states, as you'll see, uh, we could call low and high. So high, low rainfall or high rainfall. Of course it could be a lot more detailed than that. We could have numerical values uh, but this will be simple enough for, for us at this time. So now we can see that we have two potential states that rainfall could be in. The low rainfall or the high rainfall. And let's do the same for the soil and moisture content today. So description, states, and we're going to define this uh, as low, just press enter to go down to the next line, and then high, and we'll press apply, and OK. So now we have high and low, and we'll use this to predict the runoff tomorrow. Let's define these states as high, medium, and low. So we'll have three states uh, in this, this particular example. Okay, now by default, we haven't identified any probabilities of whether it's likely to be low rainfall or high rainfall on a particular day, uh, nor have we identified whether it's low or high soil mo moisture content. So those probabilities by default are given even probability, 50% chance for either one and 50% chance for, for either of the soil contents. So they're, they're obviously not realistic. Uh, but they're, they're, they're the default numbers and we will change those numbers potentially, ideally, according to data. If we have an understanding of how many days a year do we get low or high rainfall according to whatever definitions we're using. Uh, and of course the likelihoods of high, medium or low runoff then are also evenly divided at this point by 33% probability each. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to start to think about how I might uh, define these relationships between rainfall, soil, moisture, uh, and, and runoff tomorrow. So when I open this particular dialog box, if I press table down here, I can start to fill in a table. And again, there are many different ways that I could do this. There are many sources that I could use for data. Uh, we can also define probability density functions that translate into numbers. Uh, but we're going to use a very simple approach here and just put the numbers in uh, ourselves manually. So if we think about it, uh, low rainfall, low soil moisture content, so the soil is very dry, uh, that almost certainly means that the amount of runoff will be low in that circumstance. So these are in probabilities out of 100%. They need to add to 100%. So I'm going to say that's 100% certain or near enough. Um, that we will have low runoff. In the opposite situation down here, high rainfall, high soil moisture content, let's call that 100% certain, uh, that we will lead to a high categorization of, of runoff, so zero and zero. And then for these others, we might have something in between. So we've got low rainfall occurring on a day when there is high soil uh, moisture um, runoff. So we might say in this case, well, the chances of only having low runoff uh, might be only 90%, and we'll say 10% uh, for medium, and still zero for, for high. And we can do this one the other way around. We've got very high rainfall, but low soil moisture content, so perhaps 90% chance of a high level of runoff, 10% chance of a low level of runoff. Again, they need to add to 100%. If they don't, um, the, the software will prompt you to, to correct that. 
Okay, so we can press apply and okay. And now okay uh, up at the top of the dialog box. All right, now the next thing we need to do is you'll see this yellow lightning uh, icon up here which says compile net. If I click on compile net, uh, I will now start to introduce those probabilities uh, that we just entered. There are no probabilities up here. We haven't inserted a table. We could for, for likelihoods of particular states, uh, but we have put in relationships down here. So we, based on the information that we've just answered in that probability table, uh, we have initial predictions of high, medium and low that are based on these default assumptions of 50% chance of high rainfall, 50% chance of low rainfall and 50% chance of high soil moisture content uh, and 50% chance of low soil moisture content. Now what I can do is I can click on various places on these nodes so I can select uh, low rainfall. If I know if this is the, the, the forecast or the actual condition that there is low rainfall today, then I can accept. I can select that as 100% certain that there is low rainfall, and that will change the likely predictions in terms of the amount of runoff that I would expect tomorrow. If I know it's high rainfall, I can select that, and in fact, I can select any other values in between as well. So I could look at um, perhaps a more realistic scenario of where we might expect to get uh, high rainfall, uh, only a very um, small in a small minority of cases so let's say less than 10 percent in this case so that gives us the overall prediction for the amount of runoff based on a relatively low likelihood of a high rainfall so we're expecting low levels of runoff and I can do the same sorts of things with the soil moisture content I can select one of them if I know that there's a particular case or I can adjust those probabilities to to anywhere that I like and that allows me to be able to predict the amount of runoff that I might expect to have tomorrow. Now let's say I return these back to their default states and I can do that just by double clicking over on the left hand side uh, of these nodes and then I can start to do what's called backcasting and this is where Bayesian calculations, Bayesian statistics uh, actually get used to be able to, con to convert one type of conditional probability uh, into another. So I could say if I was to have for example a high level of runoff tomorrow uh, and I know that I have a high level of runoff tomorrow I could look at what are the most likely conditions that would lead to a high level of runoff tomorrow uh, and those conditions happen to be a high level of rainfall uh, and an increased probability, an increased likelihood uh, of a high soil moisture content. Uh, medium, if I've got medium then I'm talking 50-50 between the two uh, or I could look at, uh, I could backcast the conditions that I would expect to lead to a low level of runoff, lower levels of, of rainfall and the soil moisture content also plays a role. You can see that the soil moisture content is much less significant um, in, in making this determination than the actual rainfall was. And that's a function of the way that we filled in that conditional probability table, the way that we looked at those percentages of 90% and 10%, uh, and it was much more heavily weighted towards the rainfall having an effect uh, than the soil moisture content having an effect. We could change the numbers and, and get different results. So that's all I'll show you with this particular uh, network. It's a very simple concept. You could come up with all sorts of two parameter probability questions yourself to be able to design or you could come up with some much more complicated examples. If you go to the file menu on Netica and you press open uh, you'll see that there are a number of different uh, examples that are already pre-made Bayesian networks and some of these are the tutorial examples including the chest uh, clinic example. So you can open up some of those uh, examples. You'll note there's color coding here. Um, I'm, I'll, I'll leave it to you to work out how to do that color coding. It's relatively simple. Um, but when you open these examples now, you'll be able to search through and have a look at some of the details that have been developed and that sit underneath uh, the Bayesian calculations. So we have a conditional probability table here. 
um, the presence of tuberculosis or cancer, whether or not the patient has bronchitis, whether bronchitis is absent or present, and how those different relationships lead to different probabilities um, of, of having cancer or whatever it was that, that, that we were predicting in this particular uh, outcome. Um, so, so many examples in there that you could open uh, and have a look at, and some of them are much more much more complicated, uh, and and you know, encourage you to um, play around with them, have a look at how some of these uh, Bayesian networks are put together, and try and understand the cause and effect relationships that underpin whatever it is that's being predicted in the end. So in this case, the age of a battery uh, influences whether or not the battery is likely to have strong uh, battery voltage, weak battery voltage, or be dead. Uh, but it's also a function of the charging system, and how well the charging system works is a function of whether or not the alternator on the car uh, is, is working uh, itself. Uh, whether the battery works will determine whether the headlights work. And so we can work through and, and get an understanding of, in this particular case, what it is that might be wrong with the car. Why isn't it starting? Is it because of the battery? Uh, or is it because of the main fuse in this, in this case? Uh, they're the basic steps in building a Bayesian network, and they're the steps that I hope you'll be able to play around with Netica, have a look at uh, some of the online tutorials, and get to know a little bit more about how to use that, that software package. It's a very useful and practical tool to be able to use. All right, thanks a lot.